Here now is Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrells with Talk to Tom, sponsored by Greenway Dodge. Hello everyone, I'm Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrells. Welcome to this edition of Talk to Tom. Not in the studio this week, we have taken Talk to Tom on the road, of course, with the whole program, and we're out here in nature in Lake County. Over my shoulder, right out there, right out there, over in the, the distance, if you will, are the hills. Higher elevation than anywhere else in Central Florida. Did you ever drive through here and wonder why Mont Verde, Claremont, Ferndale have rolling hills and why they're so pretty like that and the rest of Florida is kind of flat, close to sea level? I wondered myself. So we invited to talk to Tom, a very special guest. Please welcome to the show right now, Professor Emeritus Dr. Joseph Donahue from the University of Central Florida. All right, let's talk about this area. I love it out here. Um, if, you've, if you're from Central Florida, you know I love to ride my Harley Davidson. This is the area that I love to ride it in the most, the rolling hills up and down the higher elevations that I can see. I can see Orlando off in the distance. Tell the folks at home why this part of Lake County is at a higher elevation than the rest of Florida. Well, um, I, actually, I ride my trek out there, too, probably at a lower speed than your uh, Harley. But the reason for, for the hills is that uh, there are these uh, long, linear, north-south sand bodies that run most of the length of the peninsula. Uh, so think of uh, barrier islands like Merritt Island or Santa Rosa Island, long, thin barriers of, of sand. Although these weren't strictly barrier islands, but that's what, what you're standing on. You're standing on the eastern flank of what's called the Lake Wales Ridge. That's one of these sand bodies. Um, and actually, just west of, of where you are, where you're pointed, is Sugarloaf Mountain, which is the highest point on the highest of these sand bodies. Uh, Sugarloaf is 312 feet, and the, that uh, it's the northernmost, almost northernmost part of the Lake Wales Ridge, which is 100 miles long starting at uh, near Lake Placid, running through Avon Park, uh, Lake Wales, Haines City, and, and, and Claremont, and ending just before it gets to, uh, to Leesburg. If you look on a topographic map, you can count maybe a dozen of these features, but th this is by far the highest of those. There are features like it, parallel to it on either side, uh, on a plane that is maybe, I'm looking at an air photo right now, maybe 60 or 70 miles wide, containing these uh, linear shorelines. So these are ancient uh, positions of sea level, higher sea level, uh, going back, uh, in some cases, millions of years. Well, like how long? How long did it take it to get like this? I mean, it had to be, if the, you're telling me this was the shoreline, how many millions of years ago are we talking? It's, it's not an easy question to answer. Um, you've probably heard that before from scientists, but some... Some have said it's Pleistocene. It <laughs> <laughs> two, two, to th two to three million would be Pleistocene uh, based on mollusks, fossils. Others have said uh, Pliocene age for this shoreline about five million years ago. But it could be, and I think it's even older than that, maybe late Miocene, uh, which ge geologically is about eight million years ago. So the problem is, wow. the reason why it's a complicated answer is because uh, dating geologic materials normally requires one or another long-lived radioisotope that uh, can be directly dated. Sand doesn't contain anything like that normally. So we have to re rely on indirect dating methods. Fossils are the typical indirect dating tool, but those are pretty crude because fossils just date the, the time during which this particular species lived, from the time it evolved to the time it went extinct. So it's not very accurate. Um, but uh, there is another in indirect method um, using global sea level history. That's, that's the basis on which I say it could be as much as 8 million because we know that the most recent time when global sea level was uh, at a recent high stand, about 40 meters above, 130 feet, was 8 million years ago. So if you were standing where you are or a little bit west of there, at the top of uh, uh, Sugarloaf Mountain, eight million years ago, and you're looking north, which is to your back there, um, you would actually actually see water. You would see part of the Atlantic Ocean because uh, the, the ridge, most of Florida would be underwater. Um, 
the Sugarloaf Mountain would still be about, what, 180 feet above sea level. So you'd be looking down on either side, east and west, you would, you would actually be able to see to the horizon, and at the horizon would be ocean. And so, and also to the north, to the to the south, you, you would see sand. So it'd be pretty interesting. Talk to me. You said this was covered in water. If if the ocean were here, that we were to dig down in that ridge or those hills, would we find seashells? It, it, you do find it if you dig down far enough. But but where you're standing and uh, quite a ways below that is uh, really not marine. It's not uh, ocean uh, originally. It's uh, dunes. For you know. Uh, uh, what wind laid wind laid deposits and the river borne deposits you have to go down pretty deep to get to marine mollusks but yeah you would find them but, but they're pretty okay, rare so, in that sand area. so the whole sand area has been covered up with topsoil and and all kinds of other stuff since then right yeah and and it and it isn't really officially a soil i mean it's it's almost pure sand pure quartz sand if you're telling me that these were formed by dunes. What about mountains in the other parts of the country where there are actual mountains, like, like the Appalachian Mountains? That's part of, um, is that leftover deposits from the Ice Age or is that part of lifting from the plates colliding as well? It, it's the latter. So the, the Appalachians were formed by collisions between uh, continents, mm -hmm. bits of continents moving from the east to the west, colliding with North America. There were three main collisions. The first one was about Ordovician time, about 470 million. And, and those mountains are formed in an entirely different way. So what happens when two plates collide is more often than not, they shingle one upon another like a tile roof. And so you get a, a double thickness of, of crust and that's what makes the mountains. Let's talk about one last thing. You know, I'm all, I'm all into climate change. Uh, forecasting change is our own little invention that we came up with here, our own program through Grand Media. All of our stations are doing it and we focus on it every week here on the powerful KMG. My question is this, with rising water levels and climate changing, um, everyone has been to Miami. We see that when it rains hard, Brickell has flooding issues already. What about parts of Florida? Which areas, most especially South Florida and my coastal zones in Central Florida, are they at risk, you think, and how soon? Uh, the answer is yes, and real soon. <laughs> so I, I've seen your reports, and I, I'm very glad, very glad you're doing that. Um, so gl global sea levels rise and fall naturally, and more or less continually because of plate tectonics, mm -hmm. and more rec recently with the advance and retreat of the ice sheets. But since the end of the, of the last glacial era, which started to end 20,000 years ago, that is, the, the ice started to retreat in the north. Sea level has risen 120 meters, so that's uh, 400 feet, roughly. During the past 6,000 years, since the ice sheets finally disappeared in the north, uh, it has changed very little. But starting with the Industrial Revolution, as, as everybody knows now, around 1850, when we started burning fossil fuels in a big way, sea level started to rise steadily because of the greenhouse warming caused by the fossil fuels. Currently, it's rising about 4 millimeters per year. The global climate models, which are the only way, the only insight we have into future climate, uh, all project that global sea level will continue to accelerate in the rate of rise, and that sea levels by 2100, the end of this century, will be over one meter above present, so 3.1 feet, and could be could be much more if parts of West Antarctica collapse. That's the, the worst case scenario. If that happens, it could be two meters or more. Some of the worst case projections um, say that it could be two meters um, by 2100, but, and certainly by, by another century. So a one meter rise, just to, just for comparison, a one meter rise inundates uh, about 10% of Florida. And as you said, that's most, mostly in the South and, and Southwest. So we're rising currently at about four millimeters per year but modeling projects, we could rise as much as how much? Uh, certainly one meter. I mean, one meter used to be a, a, mm -hmm. an outrageous projection, but now it's it's pretty much uh, yeah. what what most of the climate models would say, and potentially uh, potentially so, two meters and even more. Yeah. So I hate to be flippant here, but buying buying property in extreme South Florida in Miami probably not a good idea. Yeah. 
it's, it's not, and, and even the insurance companies are starting to realize that it, it's, it's going to be harder and harder to get a mortgage and insurance on coastal property. I, I see it coming. I just hope people truly understand. Hey, doctor, I appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us here on Talk to Tom. Everyone home, this is Dr. Joseph Donahue, Professor Emeritus in Planetary Studies at the University of Central Florida. We're coming to you right now from Lake County with the Big Ridge right behind us. Now you know more about how it got here, what it's made out of, and where we're going from here into the future. Thanks for joining us on Talk to Tom. See you next time.